I think pretty good when you watch him uh, last night. He didn't have, I want to say, seven snaps early on. They had two, three and outs. But uh, he's playing with a lot more power. Uh, he's really he's really strong versus tight ends. And, and the biggest thing that I'm looking forward to is watching how he plays against versus tackles in these upcoming weeks. So he's been physical all these last couple of weeks in camp. So he's really done a good job. He's stronger. His short area power is a lot better. And so I'm excited to see what he does. How did he get stronger? What were some of the things that you knew? When, before he left last season, what were some of the things you said on the parting words about how he could get stronger? Well, I mean, I, obviously the weight room, but specifically. I think some of it was just rest. You know, when, you, when you're a rookie, you really don't have a break. You go right from the senior bowl if you play in that, or right from a, a bowl game right in this. So there's really never that. I think just giving his body a year of recovery, uh, a true off season, he could grow a little bit. That was, I think that was his more instrumental than anything that you could get. And in the weight room, obviously, they, Josh and those guys do a great job. But just that little small time of a break was big for him. Do you, do you notice a difference in him in terms of that stuff? He's confident. You know, I, I think I think with experience comes confidence, and uh, I think he understands his, his that the role that he, he's in that he's earned. And so uh, that part has been good. You know, in his day to day, he's always been a, a, a self motivated guy. You don't have to push him. He wants to be in there. He wants to get it done. So that's been really fun to see him taking on that leadership role. Because when you have so many big personalities in that room, so many veterans, is he uh, is he starting to become uh, more vocal? Yeah, you know, you got. He's he's really not that kind of guy. He's really a lead by example guy. You know, he's not a he's not a rah rah kind of guy. In my experience been with him, but uh, he says he, he says what he means and he means what he says when you, when you when you have a conversation with him. So, just having him be in there in his presence, his work ethic on the field has been the most important thing that I've had with him. You mentioned his motivation. Is that why you guys have no uh, problem putting him in there first team? At yeah. right end, because maybe some guys would kind of rush on on that. I, I just I, I, he also will keep himself motivated even though he's uh, yeah he's he, he, he's come in and worked every day and you know I, we don't talk about depth charts. I mean obviously that that's a big thing for for some guys, but for us it's just guys coming in and then finding the guys that we need to, to play that day and to, to win the game. And that's really what it comes down to. And Derek's been a big part of that. Fletcher's had his role in that. And, and that's been the exciting part. You got the guys, you know, the number one thing before we go out and play is they want to find a way to win the game. And that's been, that's been, and, and Derek's just continued that throughout this whole process. What are some other ways that he can beat tackles, left tackles, with his bull rush besides his power? I mean, what are some of the technique ways that? Can, oh, well, one of the things that, that, that attracted us to Derek is his ability to, to speed the edge. He's got great closing speed, and he's got the great ability to finish on quarterbacks because his ability to bend. And so that's always been his primary deal. But, you know, obviously now with the complement of the power move that he's had, it just it just makes him – it gives him that more to his arsenal. It gives him that more, more tools in his toolbox. So that's been the biggest thing. He's, he's complemented that power. I mean, that speed with the power now, and hopefully that pays off well for him in the upcoming weeks. You mentioned the versatility of some of the guys that have been inside. We've seen that on, on third downs. Yes. How important is it going to be for you guys to get into those those passing situations and kind of let them attack? I, I know if you can win first and second down, it makes third down a lot easier. And what I mean by that is your ability to control the run game and to and, and, and to keep people behind the sticks allows you to become a good rush team. It's hard to become a great rush team on third and two and third and three. And so uh, it's always been our staple with Jim and, 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 and Doug to be able to, to get guys in there who can hammer the run game and then gives us the ability and earn the right to go pass rush on, on, on third down situations as well as second long situations. To have some of those lines out there on third down, how unique is that to be able to to say your question how, again. How unique is it to have some of those third down lines you put out there? If it's, you know, Chris, Derek, Michael Bennett, Fletcher Cox. It's fun. I mean, it is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fun thing to have in your arsenal. And what it also does is it, 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 it makes offenses really have to prepare for you. You know, and, and so that diversity now allows you to have guys to rush at every angle. So when you got a guy like Fletch, you don't always have to rush inside. He can rush on the edge. You got a guy like BG who doesn't always have to rush on the end. He can rush interior. And Michael Ben is in that group, so it gives us some, it gives us a lot of multiplicity in that regard. The, the flip side is, you know, Tim Jernigan was a big part of the success on, on first and second down last year. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like you're prepared to, to deal with his absence? 
Well, you know, obviously, uh, there's no, I don't know the timetable on that, but what it does do is it gives a lot of our young guys opportunities. I, I think we got some young guys that have the ability to, to complete in this league. And so what I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this in regards is a lot of an opportunity for guys because now they're getting to rush with guys who, who are signature guys in this league. So they don't have to just be the guy. You get an opportunity to rush with Fletcher Cox and, 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 and Michael Bennett and those guys. So there, there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of snaps out there for those younger guys to compete for. Of your top four ends, quote unquote top four guys, you know, Derek, Michael, BG, and Chris, mm -hmm. three of them have predominantly rushed from the left side in the entire career. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, right now you have Josh back in the but at some point, is it going to be, I mean, I think Michael's done it a little more than both BG and Chris. Is it going to be Michael maybe more on that side? or Not, he, not really. I, I think that's more public. The shade's a shade when you, when, you, when you teach this game. And, you know, a lot of our guys are multiple. They don't even put their hands in the ground. A lot of times you will watch our guys stand. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking for more than anything is where's the matchup. And so wherever the matchup is, that's where we want to put guys. So that's why we don't have just always a, a right defensive end and a lefty. We play the, 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 the next best guy. So if the next best guy is Josh Sweat, he's the next best guy for this situation. Well, because last year, I mean, Vinny primarily rushed from one side and BG primarily rushed from the one side. Right. I just, you know, well, we around moved him around. If you go back and look yeah, around, bit, yeah. you moved him around. And, and it, it just came down to the versatility, the matchups that he knows. And that's the thing that you look for more than anything. You're always saying, okay, where's the best opportunity for us to get a win? And, and the way offense are now with the three-step drops and the max protections, that's critical because you can't, you can't double them all. So you're always trying to put those guys in those key positions where if you if, once you do get a chance to win one in critical, i.e. the Super Bowl, you got a, you got an opportunity. That was a matchup situation more than anything. Of those those young DTs you were talking about, what do you know? What does Destiny do well? What does Elijah do well? What? Well, you know, a guy like Destiny, he's been in this his third season. He's got size. Uh, he's got he's got a lot of power. He's up to about three. I want to say three fifteen in that area. So when you first got him, he was a three hundred pound guy. Now he's developed, got muscle, he's got shorter with power and strength. He has the ability to really take on double teams, which is huge in this league. Um, you look at a guy like uh, Elijah. Elijah flashes, but he also uh, he, he's hard to move. And so guys like him being able to create knockback and play on second and first, I mean first and second down are going to be critical. Then I'll talk about a guy like Bruce Hector, a guy who's flashing. So uh, we, we we got we got some some guys out of there that hopefully these next three 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 weeks reveal themselves too.